Hello friends, welcome to the lecture of Decoding Stability Systems using MOLA models. My name is Dilip Babu. I am a master's student in the University of Salford, Manchester. MOLA models. So what is MOLA model? It is a modeling tool used to develop miniature forms of structures to study the concepts of structural behavior and stability systems. The image shown is a typical example of a MOLA model. History. MOLA models was developed by a Brazilian architect, Marcio Sequeira. Since he was an architect, he found it difficult to learn structural engineering. Hence, he developed the system to make structural engineering easier to learn. These are the components of a MOLA model. It consists of a base plate, a spring which behaves like a line element, plates which behave like a surface element, and connections. Hello friends. These are the components of MOLA models. This is the base plate. It is having a smooth finish. These ones are the base connections. It acts as supports. Next one are the spears which will help us to give pinned connection. These are springs which is used to model columns or beams. The next one is slender member called diagonals. It can be used to make bracings. The final one is obviously the blocks which help us to make rigid joints. Let us now see how to make a pinned frame. First take the base connections and place it in position. You can see that the base connections are having spears in the center to give a pinned connection. Make sure they are properly aligned. Once we place the base connections, we can now put the columns in place. These are done using spring elements. Now let's place the pinned joints on top of the columns. These are done using spears in the MOLA model so that it can allow rotation. Now place the beam in place. Use tension elements or diagonals to make sure that the structure is stable. So finally we have our pinned frame. Now let us see how to make a rigid frame. The joints as you see are now hinged. So let us use these blocks to resist the rotation at the joints. In other words to make it a rigid joint. So these blocks are placed in the junctions between column and beam to resist the rotation at that junction. The same is kept at the support as well to make the support rigid. Now our rigid frame is ready. Let us now see what happens when gravity loads act on a pinned frame. The joints as you see are pinned. 
let us now apply a dead load. You can see that the moment is not transferred from beam to column because the joints are pinned. Let us now apply a live load which is another form of gravity load. The joints are hinged as you see. The loads are moving loads or live loads. You can see that the joints allow rotation and hence the moments are not transferred to the columns. Let us now see what happens to a pinned frame when wind load is applied. A wind load is applied laterally. As you can see, the structure has collapsed. Let us now see what happens to a pinned frame when an earthquake load acts. As you can see, the structure has collapsed. Results. These are the results which we got after the experiment. We understood that a pinned frame will be stable for gravity loads but will be unstable for lateral loads. We also learned that moments are not transferred between beams and columns if you use a hinge joint or a pinned joint. The remedial measures to achieve stability were taken as following. We can restrict the movement of joints by using embracing either in tension or compression or we can restrict the rotation of joints by replacing the joint with a rigid joint. Let us now see how to stabilize a pinned frame when wind loads act. Let us introduce a diagonal member between the opposite corners of the pinned frame to resist the lateral movement. When a wind load is applied, the diagonal member goes into tension and resists the movement of the joints and thereby stabilize the structure. Let us now see what happens when the wind load is applied from the opposite direction. When the wind load is applied, the diagonal member goes into compression and buckling occurs, but still the structure remains stable. To reduce the effect of buckling, let us introduce one more diagonal member. This member will make sure that one member is always in tension while a lateral force is applied. This is called cross bracing. It is clearly visible that the structure has become more stable or stiff. You can apply the load in any direction you want. Let us now see how the cross bracing system behaves during an earthquake. The base plate is moved to resemble the ground motions. As you can see, the structure is stable. Let us now study the behavior of a rigid moment resisting frame. As you can see, the joints are rigid. Let's apply a dead load. You can see that the moment in the beam is transferred to the columns due to rigid joints. Let us now study the behavior of a rigid frame on application of a live load.
the load is applied as a moving load and you can see that the moments in the beam is transferred to the columns due to rigid joints. Let us now study how the rigid moment resisting frame behaves when a wind load is applied. The load is applied as a lateral load and you can see that the moments are transferred from one member to the other through the joints. But overall the structure remains stable. Finally, let us study how the rigid frame behaves during an earthquake. The base plate is moved to resemble ground motions. As you can see, although there are slight deflections, the structure remains stable. Results The following are the results which we got for rigid frame. We understood that a rigid frame will be stable for gravity loads as well as lateral loads. We also understood that moments are transferred from beams to columns and vice versa due to rigid joints. Let us now study a space frame or a model similar to an actual structure. The structure is stabilized by diagonal members. Let us now check its stability. In the shorter direction, the structure seems stable. Now let's check the longer direction. As you can see, the diagonal member has buckled. This is when we should introduce a new structural system called the shear wall. Let's remove the diagonal member and place the shear wall. Let's see how it behaves. The stability is exceptional. Let us now study how a shear wall behaves during an earthquake. As you can see, the structure is really stiff. Hence, shear wall is the best option during an earthquake. Results. The following are the results of shear walls. We understood that shear walls will be highly stable for gravity loads as well as lateral loads. Due to its high stiffness, it can be used in areas with seismic activities, but it has flaws as well. A main flaw is that it has low functionality. For example, if you want to provide a door or a window in the areas of shear wall, it is almost impossible. Comparison Since we have learned the various stability systems, now let us do a comparison among them. First of all, stiffness. If you are working on a high-risk project, you will require high stiffness. Hence, shear wall will be your best option. Second, cost. If cost is your major concern, pinned frame with bracing will be the best option. This is because it provides good stability with less material. Third, functionality. If you are an architect, your major concern will be functionality. Rigid frame are the best option for this. For example, in a car park, you will need free flow of tra traffic. Hence, you cannot use bracings or shear walls. Therefore, rigid frames will be the best option in a car park. Conclusion. We can conclude that no structural stability system is better than the other. It all depends on your requirement. It is up to a structural engineer to decide which is the best structural stability system for him as per the requirement of the client and the architect. This was the end of the lecture. Hope you guys enjoyed it.
Thank you for watching and have a nice day.